Well, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham. This is X-Plane 12 and a short video today looking at a little plugin called Helitrim and uh, an introduction to flying helicopters in X-Plane 12. This is a freeware model as well, the Bell 47. I'll put links to the plugins and the aircraft in the video description. I don't have any uh, real flying time on helicopters. I had a trial flying lesson in a Robinson R44 about 20 years or so ago, just for a little bit of fun. Uh, but I've had no actual proper flight training on the aircraft. I like messing around with helicopters in the simulator just because it's something a bit different and because it's a proper hands-on stick kind of flying. One of the things that makes helicopters a little bit more complicated to simulate is based on how the flight controls on a helicopter work. There are very expensive uh, sim flight controls available for helicopters, but I only have a regular uh, joystick, a Thrustmaster T16000 uh, and the, the throttle for it. So one of the problems you've got with helicopters is the flight controls don't work in the same way as an airplane flight controls work. You do have the same sort of controls. You've got a stick here, so you can look at you've got roll input, you've got pitch input, and you've got anti-torque input. This model does tend to dance around on the ground a little bit as you move to controls. I hope it's not too distracting. You've also got a collective here, and on the collective you've got a throttle. But the problem you've got with helicopters is this flight control position doesn't remain constant. So if you're flying the helicopter with a lot of power in the hover, you need to hold left pedal. If you're descending with uh, less power, you'll be holding some right pedal in, in this particular helicopter. If you want to fly it in the hover, your stick may be back here. And if you want to fly fast, your stick may be here. So while an uh, aircraft has a pitch trim and things like a Cessna, the control column would be back for slow flight and forward for fast flight. The other controls, the roll controls and the yaw controls do have a do have a neutral position. So you only ever really have to trim one axis. It's easy in the real helicopter because the controls are not sprung in the middle. There's no mechanical spring on these controls and there's no aerodynamic uh, load on control surfaces really. But I'm using a spring joystick, so if I let my joystick spring, it always comes back to the middle. And it's the same, I'm using the twist stick for the rudder pedals. I don't have rudder pedals uh, set up for this aircraft. So some manufacturers or some uh, simulator developers uh, take pity on you and put trims on their helicopter. If I just pop up this control here called Axis Viewer, I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it on the, on the video here. The, the, the green spot is my control deflection, the, the joystick deflection, and the white circle is the resulting output. And it's the same with trim here. So I've got trim mapped. I can move my trim to the left using my hat switch and move my trim forward. You'll notice that the simulated control column isn't moving. But now as I move my joystick, it deflects around that trim position. And I've got the same capability on the rudder pedals. You can see that as I move the trim, the rudder pedal does change its center position. So that's OK. But it's quite slow to do. And not all helicopter developers provide trims because it's not really realistic, if that makes sense. The, the aircraft don't have a trim in the same sense as aircraft do, or, or not all of them do. So it's clear that what we really need is almost a compatibility layer, something to make our flight controls, our cheap uh, consumer grade flight controls work with helicopters. And that's where this other plugin comes in. This plugin is called Helitrim here. So I'm going to tell Helitrim to override my default trim Remember, the default trim was the red spot here. But now what I've got is the ability to deflect the controls, push the helitrim button and hold it, release the flight controls, and now my center position is here. I can then move it again, press release, and it's over here. So when I say push the helitrim button, I'm holding the control column. I depress the helitrim button, I release my flight controls to the middle, and then I release the helitrim button. If you've flown the DCS uh, Huey or the DCS Black Shark, it's very similar to that. Helitrim also lets me move the controls with the standard trim commands, 
But you can see in this case, unlike the stock add-on, the control surfaces are moving as well. And that's because what Helitrim is doing, uh, not the control surfaces, the control column is moving. That's because Helitrim is effectively uh, taking control of your joystick input and allowing you to redefine a center position. It is fundamentally, if you're a helicopter pilot, it's providing a force trim capability for aircraft that don't have it. There's also a reset button. I've got that in my joystick base, push and hold, and it'll reset back to, to normal. So I don't need to have Helitrim uh, open like this. It's a plugin. It just lives there and runs in the background. To set the flight controls up, it's really straightforward. This is my uh, joystick lever here, my joystick throttle here. You notice that I've got collective on the main slide, that's the forward backwards. And most importantly for helicopters, I'm going to have the, the throttle uh, unit here fully forward when the aircraft's on the ground. And to lift the helicopter into the air, I'm going to pull the stick or the pull the throttle back. So it's the opposite way around from uh, airplanes. I've got my throttle on the little uh, wheel here, might be able to see it a bit clearer. Don't know if it shows you. No, it doesn't show you here. There's a little wheel on the left hand side of the throttle here, and it's working the same way around as the collective. So I pull the collective towards me and I roll my hand across the top of the, the panel here, across the top of the paddle here to increase the throttle. I've got Helitrim on this little button down here. And on my main joystick, I've got my trim hat, which is up on the top. I've got your trim on these buttons here seven and eight and i've also got helitrim on button six but i tend to use helitrim on the uh, throttle because i find it just that little bit easier uh, because i'm using a twist for the torque as well so i'm twisting the the stick so i find if you're holding a little bit of twist and a little bit of deflection that getting the thumb onto that button is a little bit more challenging so Helitrim, if you've got basic hardware like this, Helitrim really makes it, I'm not going to say easy, but it's something that you can learn with practice. You can learn how to fly helicopters in the simulator with practice. So let's get it fired up. We'll put the fuel on here. It's very simple aircraft. I'm going to put the battery switch on. We'll put the mags on and the throttle. We'll make sure it's closed and then just roll it open a little bit. So we've got throttle. The mixture's up here, it's really a, a fuel cutoff, throttle mixture, fuel, mags, and then the starter's on the button here. And she starts right up. Adjust the RPM, just to bring the engine RPM to about a thousand or so. And then I'll just check that we've got what we call a dead cut. So check I've got control of the mags, slight drop, slight drop. With that, we'll put the generator on, the avionics on, and I guess I should have had the beacon on, but uh, whatever, nobody died. So looking on the outside, you can see that uh, the rotor blades are rotating uh, to the left, shall we say. Um, it's rotating from the top, it's counterclockwise. That means that as I apply power, the fuselage of the helicopter is going to try and rotate to the right, trying to rotate clockwise. That means I'm going to have to apply some uh, left pedal as I increase the power. And everything in a helicopter is counter-related. So as I increase power, I'm going to need to apply some left uh, pedal. That is going to use the tail rotor, and the tail rotor is going to push this way to oppose the torque action. But because there's only one rotor and it's on the back end, it's not balanced by another one at the front here. As well as providing that left turning tendency, it's also going to want to translate the whole aircraft to the right. So as well as some left pedal, some left stick is needed as well. So it will hover left skid low. It all gets very complicated very quickly when you look about the theory of the helicopter. But whichever way that blade's turning, as you apply power, you're going to have to put a little bit of pedal and a little bit of stick the same way as the blades turning. So my blades at the moment are going from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side of the screen. I'm going to apply a little bit of left pedal and a little bit of left stick as we take off. Let's get the rotor up to uh, running RPM. So I'm increasing the throttle just now. That's the little rotary stick here, a rotary uh, collar here. And I'm going to get the engine and the blades up to 3000 RPM. This is a direct drive. The engine's mounted vertically in the 
airframe, driving straight onto the uh, blades via a little clutch. So once we get up to about 3,000, 3,100, another mag check here. So just check that we get a slight drop, just like a Cessna, back to both. Slight drop, back to both. Car peat hot, slight drop, and back to both. Now this helicopter has got what's called a correlator. It means that as you increase the collective, you're going to ask the blades to provide more, uh, more lift, more power. You do need to increase the throttle a little bit as well. It will give you some additional throttle, but you would need to control it manually. That's great if you've got expensive helicopter flight controls. It doesn't really work so well. Although I've got my throttle bound, it's really hard to use. But fortunately, the developers realized that, and they've given you this little switch here. Um, the only purpose in this is to provide what's called a governor. So switch it to off. It's an unrealistic option. The real aircraft doesn't have it, but we are flying it with desktop hardware, I think it's an appropriate uh, compromise. And that allows the simulator itself, or the, the code for the helicopter, to adjust the RPM to keep the engine where it needs to be. So let's just use Helitrim. I'm going to beep a little bit of left stick and a little bit of left pedal, just with my, my normal trim hat, hold the stick a little bit left and hold the pedal a little bit left. Then let's look ahead and we'll get airborne. When you learn to fly helicopters, in this kind of configuration, be very realistic about the expectations of what you're going to be able to do. You're not going to be able to demonstrate a very proficient helicopter flight in your first attempt. Just get the aircraft airborne and enjoy the experience. I find it's easier to pick a landing spot that's got a, a fairly obvious horizon. So if I was parked on this spot here, I wouldn't be able to see the horizon quite as clearly. Um, that just makes it a little bit easier for me. So looking at the uh, RPM, let's see if I can set the view here. In fact, let's see if we can set the view here so it makes sense. And I'm just going to increase the collective. So I'm pulling back on my throttle uh, hardware. That's increasing the collective. And you'll feel the aircraft start to get a little bit light on its skid. So I'm holding some left pedal now. And then a little bit of left stick and then lift up. And all I'm going to do now is try and keep it level while simultaneously pushing Helitrim, releasing the stick, and releasing Helitrim. If you prefer, you can try and trim it with the hat switch and with the yaw switch. But ultimately, we've got a helicopter that's in trim. I'm not holding the stick just now. Let the stick go, it kind of diverges. I'm making little inputs to correct it. But Helitrim allows me to trim it for hands off without the aircraft actually having a trim control. So if you want to fly the stock R22, you can also do it with Helitrim. I'm going to do a pedal turn, and again, rather than using the twist stick, which takes some of my precision away, I'm just going to click the left trim button on my joystick. And that starts a gentle pedal turn. And I said, be very, uh, try and maintain a sense of um, awareness of what your own capability is in the aircraft. You're flying a difficult aircraft on a desktop simulator in a 2D environment, uh, on a 2D panel, not in VR. So you won't have the same precision as real pilots would have. So yawing around, you'll get better at it, but just take it as it is. Lower the nose slightly, and just trying to keep it comfortably in the hover. Tracking with a little bit of left pedal. You can see on axis viewer in the bottom left hand side of the screen what I'm doing. And try not to get too fast or to get too high. The reason we don't want to get too high is if the engine fails, our only ability to cushion the landing at this point is the inertia left in the rotor system. And if we're too high, we'll just uh, run out of energy. The Robin Star 22 is very vulnerable to that. It's got very low inertia in the rotor. The Bell 47 is a little bit better. So just twisting with my, my pedal here. Let's pretend that those lights don't exist. And you'll notice to fly in a straight line, I'm constantly adjusting the pedals just a little bit. So that's my twist stick. And also it needs to hover, as I said earlier, a little bit of left skid low, just to stop the thrust from the tail rotor, pushing the aircraft off to the right. This is uh, Nice in southern France. It's uh, stock scenery. 
And the helipads here are very useful because they've got these uh, brackets around the outside of them. So I just hover roughly in the centre and again I'll give it two clicks of left yaw just to move my yaw pedals a little bit more to the left and we'll do a pedal turn. And we'll just concentrate on keeping the aircraft roughly in the same position. You see as I come through 90 degrees that little uh, line on the pavement there tells me I'm still in the centre. Look to the left and I'm still in the centre there. You'll notice that whenever you move your view around or you, you take your hands off the stick for a second, the helicopter starts to diverge. That's expected. It's not naturally stable like an aeroplane. But round we come, just continuing the whole turn, 360 degrees, trying to keep it roughly over the H and roughly in the centre of the pad. Lots of little movements. And again, this is where you've got some limitations with your desktop hardware that you wouldn't have with professional helicopter controls, but uh, you've got a joystick that's maybe $100 rather than a couple of thousand dollars for professional helicopter flight controls. Let's just stop the pedal turn, a little bit of right, a little bit of right trim, and then we'll put the aircraft back down. And then reduce the collective. So what we're going to do now is take the aircraft for a short flight around this circuit uh, here at Nice. Uh, we're basically going to get airborne from this helipad here. We'll fly up to 500 feet, uh, turn left, track downwind, and then return to the pad that is immediately behind us, the two big pads here at uh, Nice. You wouldn't really fly a circuit uh, like this at Nice. It's not that sort of heliport, but it's a nice, wide, unobstructed area with uh, sensible aiming points to, to fly. So there's the other pad behind us here. Now, if you've seen the movies, you'll have seen helicopters fly into very tight, confined landing areas. And uh, yes, they can do that, but we're basically day one helicopter pilots here. We need lots of space to make the approach and landing. The other thing that you may not be really expecting is that helicopters uh, of this type do not generally complete the takeoff entirely vertically. In fact, the majority of the takeoff is done horizontally, and that's because of what we call the height velocity diagram. There's the airspeed across the bottom and the altitude vertically on the uh, axis here. And anything in this gray shaded area down here, that's a, a dangerous area for your helicopter to be. And that is because there's not enough energy in the rotor system to conduct a uh, force landing, an autorotative landing. You've got to be at very low altitude here, down at the very bottom here, up to five feet or so, to do an autorotative, to do a, a, a landing using the energy stored in the rotor system. Once you've got some forward speed, you can land the aircraft like an autogyro, so an autorotative landing, using the energy that is being maintained in the rotor head. Also, you don't want to maintain very high speed at low altitude, because below 50 feet at high speed, you may not have enough energy available in the rotor system to kill all the horizontal velocity that you've put into the aircraft. So when you touch down, you would have some forward component, hence it's only, su su uh, only suitable for a smooth landing surface. Now this is for the Bell 47. Our Robinson R22 has got much less inertia in the rotor system, and as a result, the uh, keep-out area is a lot bigger. But for us, all I want to do is get airborne slightly, accelerate forwards, and then try and climb up through this white gap here. So, if you look at 30 knots and 50 feet, anything above 30 knots and anything above 50 feet should keep us safe. As I increase the collective to climb away, to accelerate away, remember that is also going to cause me to need some left pedal to offset the torque. That left pedal is going to push the tail right to keep the nose going left, and that's going to translate the aircraft to the right. So a little bit of left pedal and a little bit of left stick to keep the aircraft tracking straight ahead. Roughly in the direction of this uh, outcrop of land here or this hill in the distance. So let's lift into the hover. The aircraft is mostly in trim, but let's just check that. I'll just reset it with heli trim. And then all I'm going to do is increase the collective, lower the nose, a little bit of left pedal, a little bit of left stick, and just let the aircraft accelerate 
until we've got a reasonable forward airspeed. Then I'm coming back to neutral pedal and then I'm holding some forward stick and a little bit of right pressure. There's 30 knots and 50 feet. And now what I'm going to do is push the helitrim button, release the stick and then release helitrim. And now the aircraft is more or less trimmed for the climb out. Start the turn. And you see that the neutral position is slightly forward and slightly to the left with this helicopter and the stick is, uh, the, the pedals are quite neutral. So 50 knots for the climb and we're going to go up to 500 feet and basically just turn into downwind and then try and land it. And remember I said the whole point in this exercise is to have fun and to be aware of your limitations with the hardware that you've got. We're not looking for perfection in this case. We just want to enjoy ourselves and maybe learn a little bit of flying. Right to 500 feet, I'm going to reduce the collective. You'll notice as I reduce the collective, the nose goes down. So I can trim that or I can use the heli trim button. And I also need to put a little bit of right pedal in order to offset that reduced torque. And now the aircraft is tracking in a straight line. You can see the yaw string is completely vertical. We're still climbing a little bit. There's no vertical speed indicator in this aircraft, so it's not the end of the world. Once you're moving, it is very much like an airplane. Um, it's reasonably stable, this aircraft, when it's in forward flight. You can fly it like any other little airplane. Just be aware that everything is interrelated. So as you increase the collective, you change the pitch, and you also get some yaw inputs from the varying torque as well. So you can't make a single control movement in isolation. Everything is joined together. And the more experience you get flying helicopters, the more you'll be able to move from reacting to what the helicopter does to anticipating what the helicopter does. And that's what gives you stable flight. Let's make the car heat hot and we'll start the turn. Reduce the power, reduce the collective. Back trim a little bit just to keep the nose up. And I'm looking for no slower than 40 knots, 40 to 50. And remember, I'm trying to make a gentle approach into this helipad. I'm not flying into a hot landing zone. It's not a war movie. I just want to put the aircraft down on the pad safely. I'm going to maintain a minimum of 30 knots until about 50 feet or so. So I'm controlling airspeed with pitch and I'm controlling the, the descent angle with the collective. So I'm really just looking at the pad in front of me and adjusting the collective, keep the pad in the same, at the same aspect, if you like, the same angle down from the aircraft. I don't want to fly too slowly. This is about the slowest I'd ever really want to fly. I'm at 200 feet. I do have enough energy to make an auto rotative landing, but I'm just adjusting that collective to keep the pad coming straight towards me. Once we get down to 100 feet or so, there's a little bit of right pedal needed. I'll just trim that out with Helitrim. I can lift the nose to start slowing down. And remember, as I put collective in, the nose will come up all by itself. So I'm now going to have to help her forwards, trim it again. And then finally, once we're at low level, 10 feet or so, you're going to need a reasonable amount of left pedal, and then we'll just settle into the hover. Now, it's quite jerky at the moment because I'm holding a lot of uh, twist on my stick it's not trimmed out at all, so just stabilise the hover, press helitrim, release the stick, and then release helitrim. And now we've got an aircraft that is a little bit easier to control with a, a little bit of finesse, because the twist action on the stick means you're using a lot of muscle energy to hold it there, and really what you want to be doing is controlling it with your fingertips. So if it's... Oh, I, sh I should have gone carpet cold as well, my apologies. So carpet ho cold on the approach. Let's set the aircraft down. And let's have a look at the approach on the replay. So we want to be careful as we slow down over the pad because the tail can get pretty close. This aircraft's not too bad. A bigger aircraft with more energy take longer to slow down. I'm flying a very shallow approach here. It could probably be a little bit steeper. But as this air flowing through the rotor plates, it's getting uh, lift there as well. As we slow down through a phase called translational lift, we start to lose that forward lift, and you see the aircraft takes a, a, a much more significant sink there, just at that point here. So as we start, watch the shadow, 
we lose the translational lift and then the aircraft just drops and that's what we have to anticipate and increase the collective and remember when you increase the collective the nose comes up as well so it's counterintuitive but you bring the stick up and a little bit of forward pressure to maintain it then it kind of dances around for a little bit as we fix the heli trim and then finally we set the aircraft down And that's us. Shutting down the aircraft is just the same as uh, any other. All I'm going to do is make sure that my uh, throttle is set uh, to the minimum position and flick this little switch here and that'll take the, the assistive governor off if you like. And then once that's off, I flick the switch to on, essentially that turns the governor off. You see the engine RPM drops off and the rotor blade starts to decay. Whilst the engine's at low RPM, we just do a quick check on the mags, make sure we've still got control of those left and right. With that, I'll switch the avionics off. And then we will operate the cutoff here. So throttle's idle, make sure it's the cutoff. Engine stopped, fuel off, mags off. And then as it's slowing down, I can increase the collective a little bit, just lift the collective ever so slowly. That increases the pitch on the blades and helps them slow down. Some aircraft are fitted with a rotor brake, some aren't. Uh, some don't allow this uh, increase in the collective, some do, just a case of knowing your aircraft. Once it's uh, spilling down, generator off, beacon off, and master off. And that's us. So Helitrim doesn't do any special magic with uh, stability. It doesn't provide stability assistance. All it does is let you set an arbitrary position on your stick, the whole range of your stick and your pedals, and use that as the neutral position. So when you're flying fast, you can have your neutral position here. And as you're flying slowly, you can have the neutral position back in the center position. So I hope you enjoyed that short flight in the Bell 47 with Helitrim. I'll put links to Helitrim, the Axis Viewer plugin and the Bell 47 in the video description. Of course, if the Bell 47 is not to your taste, there are other freeware helicopters available as well, like this fantastic uh, Dolphin. It's fully stabilised with stability augmentation and attitude hold. It's got a four axis autopilot and you can fly it using the autopilot in a similar manner as you would fly an airliner. But it's good to see both ends of the scale. It's good to see uh, manual hands-on aircraft like the Bell 47 and uh, super modern aircraft like this. Of course, this is a 1980s, 1970s aircraft, but you can see an aircraft that's got uh, stability augmentation to help you out. And modern helicopters, brand new helicopters, have got even more capabilities beyond this. Maybe we'll have a look at the dolphin in a later video. Thanks very much for watching the video. I know it's not the, the usual sort of content for this channel. It's been a long time since I put a video out and I thought I'd uh, get something a little bit interesting for you to watch and hopefully something you can have a play with yourself. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak again shortly.